Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the fourth We Pause session. We are here today with our great friend Ashley. Um, she is actually bringing a very interesting topic today. Uh, I got to know Ashley through our previous uh, guest instructor from last week, Amanda. So she introduced uh, Ashley to me, and then we started talking, and we were like, "Oh my God, we have a lot in common!" Like she is also still in tech, but also at the same time, she's very deep into deep into a lot of like mental health related topic. She's a yoga instructor, a meditation instructor. She's also like interested in a lot of cool topics that I'm not gonna ruin her intro. I'll I'll pass the mic to her. We have a very jammed session. And we'll leave a uh, five minute in the end for any Q&A. Uh, but uh, Ashley also has a gift for us that she will be sharing a link at the end of the session. I will also include that link into our recap emails as always. So without further ado, I'll pass it to Ashley with her very exciting topic of wellness for the fi- nine to five. <laughs> It also for the five to nine, if you work that. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Ali, for having me. And shout out to Amanda. Um, if she's listening, I think she might be joining soon for introducing us. Um, it was a connection, really in alignment. And you did a great job introducing me. I'm a software engineer currently at LinkedIn. Um, I also teach yoga and meditation. Right now, it's a side thing, but I'd love to make it my main thing one day. And um, it was actually through work. I kind of learned a lot of healing um, in myself because growing up Asian American, a lot of your self-worth is in your job. And that's what I heavily identified with uh, growing up and early in my career too, was that your job is like who you are, how you're worthy to this world. And I started to rewrite that narrative as I got burned out from my job and I uh, left a relationship that left me wondering who I was. And it was through these wellness techniques, through these daily practices, um, going more introspective that I learned who I truly am outside of my job and radically thinking in that way. So I'm going to share my screen and just share some slides we can follow along here. All right. Do you see the window now? Awesome. So I really want to start this talk off by reframing your relationship to work. Um, Kind of as I mentioned earlier, it's something that you that in capitalistic society, we heavily tie our identity to. Um, But as humans, we're really meant to be in community, to connect, to love, and to serve. And sometimes like our true nature conflicts with these expectations of modern society. So what if we try radically thinking about work as something separate from ourselves and something that is can be just a financial security blanket if you are not super uh, into or passionate about your work, then it can just be something that you find um, allows you to feel the passions that you have that you actually find meaning in. Um, living with more balance and inner peace that propels you towards your ultimate goals versus keeping you in this box that kind of capitalism wants to keep you in. Um, There's also like a myth that we have to be on all the time during our nine to five. But honestly, most humans aren't built for that. Like in Spain, they have siestas. So you have these breaks in between. And it's just in America, part of that culture just doesn't exist. There's a very high productivity culture. And if you are guilty of working six hours straight, like, you know, I am, and probably most of us are because we're really ambitious and determined. I think it's really important to start to set the boundary because there's always going to be work to do, but there's not always going to be the present moment that you're living in. So um, right now I want everyone to grab their piece of paper and or journal and kind of draw a line in uh, down the middle on the piece of paper and on the left, write your current daily routine. So be really honest um, with yourself on this and you don't have to break it down like super minute, but uh, just kind of go through what your day to day is like. And then when you're done, split it up between morning, afternoon and evening. So we'll just spend about two minutes doing this. And on the right side, what you're, we're going to write is our ideal routine. So for now, leave a blank and we're going to uh, modify it as we go through.
just about a minute left to wrap up your routine um, and breaking it up between morning, afternoon, and evening. All right, maybe let's wrap it up. And if you're still working on it, that's fine. Um, you can just add in, you know, the minor details later. But I want to start off with reshaping your mornings. So having more mindful mornings, the way you start your day literally sets the tone for your day. And uh, Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty, he says, like, when you start your morning with high pressure and high stress, waking up from that alarm, rushing right into work, going right into your obligations, your body is going to operate in that stress programming for the rest of the day. And so the energy that you carry at the beginning of the day will be so important in how the rest of your day plays out. And so for this, I advise giving yourself enough time to wake up. And this might mean waking up one hour earlier than you currently do um, so that you can move through things in the morning with care and not jostle yourself. And by having the space, it'll make you feel like you're in control of your day instead of your jobs or your obligations. Um, Trying not to rely too much on caffeine or force, like having a really gentle alarm or having just some gentle light wake you up because so much of us are waking up right before we need to go to work, like at the bare minimum. And that puts your body in high stress, hearing that blaring alarm, just going straight to caffeine, which will not, will artificially bring down your melatonin level. But then that melatonin level will recuperate and you haven't naturally de decreased your melatonin level. So um, also not checking your phone in the morning because you're ingesting all of this information. You're already inviting lots of stress and stimulation at the beginning of your day. Like you were completely unconscious. And then within five minutes, you're processing your brain is processing so much information, information. So give your brains just like a little bit of a break and let yourself ease into your day. Um, and going back to melatonin, getting sunshine first thing in the morning, like through your retinas, because when you first wake up, you have lots of melatonin in your body because melatonin dictates your circadian rhythm. So melatonin, when you uh, your pineal gland produces it, so when it increases, it makes you tired. And sunshine and vitamin D naturally decreases that level of melatonin and allows you to wake up more naturally that way. And also getting sunshine at the beginning of the day, there's lots of studies that say it helps you go to sleep later at night because it tells your body, okay, the amount of melatonin was low at the beginning of day of the day. Now that I've been awake and the day has moved on, melatonin is going to go back up and make you feel sleepy and tired. Um, this is from Jay Shetty's book. So time and in integrating this in your mornings, thankfulness, insight, meditation, exercise. So starting your day off with gratitude, just writing or thinking three things that you're grateful for really brings perspective and purpose back into your life and insight through reading or podcasting meditation. If you're a morning meditator, it's okay if you're not. Um, some people are evening meditators and I'll get into that later and some gentle movement through exercise too. And being consistent with this on the weekends is really key to embedding this routine in your life. And so one breathwork I want to share for energy boosting is called Kapalabhati breathwork or skull shining breath. And I'll demo that with you as well. But um, some things to keep in mind if you're pregnant and if you easily get, you know, anxiety or panic attacks, or if you're on a full stomach, maybe like hold off on this one. But um, this is how Kapalabhati works. It's um, an energy inducing breath. So you're going to Take short inhales and exhales through your nose. So focus more on the exhale. So you're kind of breathing out your nose like. I don't know if you can hear my little nostrils going. And then when you exhale out the nose, you're going to push the belly out or push the belly in actually. So kind of sucking the belly in with every breath and then your belly will naturally inflate as it regains the breath again for the next inhale. So do about 20 to 30 rounds of this. In the morning, take a break for about a minute, do deep breaths, and then go back to doing it again. And you might feel like a little bit of tingling, a little bit of vibration, like kind of awakening the crown chakra is what this does. And so it allows lots of insight for the morning. So now I want you to go back to that piece of paper and readjust your morning routine to include some of the practices I mentioned and circle one practice that you could start tomorrow. We'll just spend like maybe 30 seconds to a minute on this. So 
try not to overthink it and I can step back to these just so that you can take a look at, the, at it again. Right, maybe 15 more seconds to wrap up adjusting your morning routine. All right, and feel free to um, come back to this if you're not done or if you want to think about it more, but we're going to move on to some midday self-care. So the afternoon, the most critical part of the day where we go through lots of productive moments, um, it's helpful to remember that humans are not meant to mentally grind continuously, that taking breaks is good for your brain. And in tech culture, at least, um, releasing the guilt of always being on. And this may vary depending on, you know, what type of work you're in. If you're in a lab, if you're in the hospital, um, it's I'm trying to make this as broad and expansive with practices you can take away as possible. But obviously, this doesn't relate to you because you are like a very on the uh, on the go service job, then kind of include this when you can. But if you are at a desk for a lot of the time and you tend to overwork, send set a 75 to 90 minute timer for when you're working when you're in your focus time and then when that timer goes off take a break go stretch drink water do some breath work because um, like i mentioned it's really easy to just get sucked in something for six hours or four hours and not even move so setting a timer so that you know when to pace yourself and when you're feeling stressed kind of in the middle of the workday, there are two vagus nerve exercises that i want to share so they activate the parasympathetic nervous system. Um, the vagus, di vagus nerve runs along the back of the ear. It's the 10th cranial nerve, and that allows you to come down from the stress response of flight or fight. So um, one of them is just a kind of somatic exercise. I call them cross arm stomps. So what you'll do is kind of cross your arms, uh, go standing. And when you're standing, inhale and come up on your tippy toes. And then exhale, stomp your heels onto the ground. And just kind of allow all the stress and the worries to kind of be deposited into the earth. And then you can do this for as many times as you need until you feel kind of more settled, more clear. And you can also switch your arms halfway through as well. So that's one of the uh, practices that I wanted to share. Second one is a cranial release, which is really good if you're doing work that's like in your head a lot. So take your thumbs and bring them to the center of your eyebrows. And then take the rest of your fingers towards like your forehead, the center of your forehead. And then you can close your eyes for this and just begin to bring pressure between your fingers, like almost like you're bringing your eyebrows and your forehead closer together and just kind of feel like maybe massaging with the thumbs, feeling the pressure in the head, just slowly release and just close your eyes and breathe as you do this. And then whenever you're ready, you can let your hands go and go back to whatever you're doing. So two really quick exercises that you could do and you'll feel like almost an immediate difference. Um, the second tip I have is very dependent on the type of work that you're in. But if it's possible to block off your calendar one to two hours in the middle of the day to just reset, give yourself a mindful lunch, time away from the desk, doing some chair yoga. Um, when you're sitting in your chair, you could always reach for your desk and like kind of put your palms on your desk and just do some cat cows while you're sitting. Like that's always just useful and like helpful and just allowing your spine to flow through in between cat and cow. And last tip I have is when you are maybe struggling to find some balance and want to refocus on something, you m maybe have been really distracted, alternate nostril breathing or Nadi Shodhana. So this is very common in yogic breath work. Um, what you'll do is take two fingers to the center of your forehead, your third eye, have your ring finger and thumb accessible and start by just closing your right nostril with your thumb. Take an inhale through your left nostril, close the left nostril with your ring finger and then exhale out the right nostril. And then again, inhale through the right, 
close. Exhale through the left. Inhale through the left. Close and exhale through the right. You can do a few rounds of that until you kind of feel balanced. It's supposed to balance the left side and right side of your body as well and get the energy channels kind of all interconnected there. And again, if you need an energy boost, the Kapalabhati or Skull Shining Breath that, that I mentioned earlier is also great as well. So here, let's pause and adjust your afternoon routine. Maybe write down a few of those practices that you found, you felt something, you felt a shift and something that you want to take away and include in your afternoon breaks. So we'll just spend about a minute here. Right, so maybe finish up 10 more seconds to wrap up your train of thought. And again, circle one practice that you want to start tomorrow. Then we'll move on to the evening. So transitioning from work to evening. And this mantra, I have to remind myself, whatever is at work can stay at work. Even if you're an entrepreneur, it can feel like your work is your entire life. But um, especially for entrepreneurs, you have to set these boundaries. And what I like to do, because I work in tech and then, you know, I moonlight as a yoga teacher, I have to set aside like the logic and then get into the body. So I do like a spacing ritual to sort of create this transition from my job to my like real life. And so first is physical space, getting out of the head and into the body, doing any activity that brings body awareness to you to center and ground you and bring you back to your own frequency. So like walking, taking your dog for a walk, if you have one, yoga, going to the gym, any movement, stretching or qigong, like 10 minutes after work to create that physical space. Next is the mental space. So doing a quick meditation or a breath work. If you're an evening meditator or just, you know, a practice that doesn't allow you to think too much and you can just decompress and from looking at a screen all day. So one of these is a triangle breath, which also activates the vagus nerve. And um, what, how you'll do that is you'll take your right hand and get into pranayama mudra, which is a hand gesture with um, your ring and your middle finger kind of in towards your palm and the other hands are out. And then what you're going to do is inhale for three. Then close your nostrils, tuck in your chin and lock and hold the breath for three seconds. Then release, lift the head and exhale for three. So we'll do that one more time. Inhale for three, hold and lock, release, lift the head, exhale for three. And so you can do as many rounds of that that you want to ground you and come back to your balance. Um, again, cranial release is something that I love to do as well. And then just shaking it out, jumping, dancing, any somatic release that you need. Last is creating the spiritual space. So doing some ritual acts of self-love, like pursuing your creativity, releasing more emotions in the body, journaling, crafts, destimulation, and decreasing screen time. So limiting phone and TV when you uh, inch closer towards nighttime, because that blue light is really going to mess with your melatonin. And also like the content you consume is going to mess with your ability to fall asleep too. And just, I keep this really flexible and just anything that brings you joy, like create carve out time and space for that between your work day ending and your next work day beginning. So lastly, adjust the evening part of your routine and Maybe swap out some of the previous habits that you have with something that gives you physical, mental, and spiritual space. And we'll spend about a minute here.
and maybe just 20 more seconds to wrap up your thoughts, finish out that ideal routine and maybe take a look at it and give yourself the chance to maybe put it up on your bathroom mirror, have it somewhere near your desk so that you can remember to come back to it and maybe commit to it. As we embark on the spring season, the spring season is always great for new beginnings because the energy of the plants and seedlings are ready to sprout and ready to bloom through. So I love that the timing of this we pause with routines is so worked out so well too. So last, I just want to go into like why have healthy routines and kind of package it all up. So having a healthy routine gives you almost like a sense of routine happiness through balance, space, and presence, and being really intentional with your day by starting it off with gratitude, giving your space, yourself time to journal and not be so consumed with your job throughout the day. And even when you are busy with your job, you have uh, opportunities to create space by taking small breaks and not feeling bad about it because humans aren't meant to grind like that. Um, cultivating more awareness of the self through these introspective practices. And as you become more aware of yourself, you'll learn how to work with your energy rather than your mind and rather than forcing through something. So for an, for example, I've learned through this practice that I'm way more creative and alert in the morning. So I'll save all my creative work at that time or anytime I need to really focus on something at work. And then in the evening time, it's slower for me, like energetically. So maybe I'll schedule calls where I don't really have to put too much mental energy into conversing with someone or just time for me to not have to do anything that's too mentally straining. And last, um, radically living by who you truly are, not by defining yourself by your job or unless your job really, really fulfills you, then props to you. But taking care of yourself to allow yourself to show up more fully in all aspects, your hobbies, your family, your children, your pets, and your work, if that is something that's meaningful to you too. So thank you everyone for your time and attention. Um, Ali mentioned the little gift and I created a seven day guide to reset your nervous system and you can scan the QR code to get on that. Perfect. Thank you for sharing the link. And all of the um, breath work in Vegas nerve exercises that I shared are in that guide. And so you can, um, if you weren't able to catch or follow along, you can go back to it. And it's also a seven day guide. So it's a good way to start. Um, a week of consistent self-care and then kind of go from there and pull from that practice. And here's all my contact information. I have a podcast where I share meditations and insight timer where I also share different meditations, yoga nidra, which is yogic sleep practices as well. So um, beyond wellness for the nine to five, I share a lot of other meditation and wellness practices too, because I love making it accessible to everyone. And yeah, I'll leave the rest of the time for questions or comments or um, anything that came up came to mind at all or any reflections that anyone has this was amazing ashley thank you so much and i'm so glad we have time for questions and reflections as well if anyone wants to start it yeah thank you ashley that was super helpful and i feel like for me something that i've been trying to work on is just like not touching my phone in the morning and so this has been like the session has motivated me to like tomorrow don't do it and also like even after work too i feel like you know i spend so much time on my phone for work and all of that and just kind of like having time where i can just just like disconnect disconnect (laughs) and like do things in the evening like with less screen time like painting or reading or something like that instead so this was really helpful and like inspiring me to actually like take action on those things that I've been thinking about, but like always just fall into the old habits. Mm -hmm. That phone in the morning one is really tough. (laughs) Um, Our brain, like once we start that habit, our brains are like wired for the dopamine of like a notification or especially if you um, are an entrepreneur, you're always like looking like, what's the next opportunity? Like, what do I, I need to hear back about this. I'm still waiting. I'm still waiting. You know, there's lots of anticipation there, but almost like going back to the dark ages, like before technology, like people were just so much happier when life was simpler, you know, and we didn't have these phones like skewing our mental perception of everything all the time. So thank you so much for sharing, Amanda. And thank you, Sid, for joining as well. Yeah, of course. I actually did have another question for you as well. Uh, (laughs) I really wanted to uh, start doing some of that couple of bhakti uh, right after, like right around 2 p.m. But I know you mentioned that we shouldn't probably do it with a full stomach. My whole reasoning to doing that was I was hoping that I would get some more energy instead of wanting to nap directly after having lunch. And so I was curious, like, why do you feel that it's something that shouldn't be done um, directly after eating a meal? 
I think that's mostly a precaution because of the abdominal work that you're doing with it. Um, you don't want to like overactivate that abdominal system after you have food or it might feel tight. You just, I think I've done it on like a semi full stomach before and I got a stomach ache after that. So if you're okay with feeling that and like dealing with that for the energy boost, that's totally up to you, your body, you know, best, but that's only my suggestion is like, it may cause a stomach ache if you're doing it with the abdominal action. But I guess that's a good point that you could also maybe just do it with the um, nostril work and feel a similar effect. That's a really good suggestion. I'll try to add a report, report back for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Of course. So I just on that, I think you should, the one, one of the reasons why they say you shouldn't do Kapalbhati after having food is because it presses your diaphragm on the way, right? So the main technique in Kapalbhati is the abdominal thing. It just takes out all the energy with the force. Like, so if you do the nostril part, you're not doing uh, the forceful action of just taking out things. So your stomach will hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say with Ashley, I've tried it. It it just like uh, it um, and it gets terrible. I mean, it 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 recovers soon, like in two three minutes, but then you miss the essence of the pressure from coming from the, mm-hmm. uh, the region. Yeah, that's such a good insight. Uh, the pool, am I saying it right? Yes, yes, the pool. The yeah. pool yeah, thank you for sharing. Because yeah, I mean, it's technically not Kabbalah Bhatti, but. Um, I have seen other breath works that just do like inhale for two, exhale for two. So um, shorter moments between exhale and exhales tend to energize you, but not doing it as fast as Kapalabhati because that's like half a second, inhale, exhale almost. So just doing like inhale two, exhale two, really balancing um, is could be a good option for the lunch breath work. <laughs> pick, pick me up. All right. Well, I will. Well, at least turn off uh, the screen share and we could still awesome. chat if we want to. Yeah, just like the last two weeks, I was just going to suggest if, if anyone wants to stay, we're going to continue hanging out. Uh, thanks again, Ashley. It was such a great uh, experience just going through this journaling. I really personally enjoyed it. I hope everyone enjoyed it as well. Don't forget uh, uh, Ashley's gift that she brought to the session. Also, she has a podcast, as she mentioned. I listened to many episodes of it. It's great. Please tune in. She's building some great content there. So uh, thanks again, Ashley, for joining us. And whoever wants to leave, uh, have a great weekend. Otherwise, we're going to hang out.